Hello and welcome everybody. It's six o'clock on Monday, March 28th, and it's the first day in our challenge. I am super excited for this whole week to begin. Um, I can't wait because just the, the feedback that I can cons consistently get from women who are actually going through this challenge is just so inspiring and it's just so you know just so nice to see that this information is actually helping people to implement that I'm always always excited to bring this information to you and it's a challenge because I am challenging you to look at your health maybe from a different perspective maybe in a way that you haven't you know, looked at before. And um, I challenge you, I tickle you out of your comfort zone a little bit by implementing some things um, that, you know, every day a little bit by doing your homework in order to implement the stuff that I'm talking about, the material that we're going through. So let me go live on my Instagram as well, because I'm streaming it in there for those of you who have, you're not on, who are not on Facebook. Okay. So this is a challenge. This is a one week event, really like four day event. And I have a bonus day for you coming up. So super, super exciting. It's going to be great. Um, but it will be even better if you guys are participating. Okay. That is why I really tickle you out of your comfort zone to engage with me. These these events are for you. These events are for you to hone in on your health, to look at your health from a different perspective, to learn, to listen, to become in tune with your body, to understand how the body works a little bit and what you can do. I will give you some tools and strategies that you can use to shift your body back into balance. Um, for those of you who join me on Instagram, hello, I'll be looking up and down, back and forth because I'm also streaming that into my Facebook group, my private Facebook group. So bear with me, okay? I'm so happy to have you here. Please let me know in the comments who's watching. If you're watching it live, please talk to me, engage with me, ask your questions, give me a comments. I will ask you as we go through this um, week as well. I'll be asking you some questions. We'll be waiting for some responses. And for those of you who are watching in the replays, please hashtag replays so I know that you um, participated as well. Before we go ahead and get started um, on day one of creating autoimmune health slash wellness um, for a normal life, right? Because that is what we want to achieve. We want to live a normal life and it is possible. Um, today, we're going to be talking about gut health, which is a huge topic. And um, before I do that, I do want to drop some housekeeping notes here. Okay. So. So that you guys know what's going to happen this week, every day at six o'clock, I will be dropping a masterclass, so to speak, 45 minutes to an hour, no longer than that. Um, you will get some homework and um, sometimes it's just reflecting. Sometimes it's really just sitting back and, um, you, and thinking about what I talked about and kind of like thinking, reflecting of where you are in your journey. And sometimes it is implementing. So sometimes I give you strategic things I want you to start implementing. And then I want you to share that with us. So I want you to share this with the group um, in the Facebook group, or you can share it um, in the comments on Instagram, or you can share it on, um, you know, on the DM and just with me personally. If you engage, if you do the homework and implement and share it with us, you will be entered into a draw. So I will have an amazing giveaway, which I will not, um, I, I'm not quite sure yet what. I have two options. Both are fantastic. So I will decide on that and let you know tomorrow. Um, so you can win a giveaway, okay? Number three, for those of you who have registered and are participating, please introduce yourself in the feed, okay? It's an event. So I want you to become engaged so that you stay committed to those days and so that you are getting emotionally attached 
to those four days and really start um, reflecting and implementing these things. Introduce yourself. If you are introducing yourself um, with a short video or with a um, static post, you can enter a an additional draw for an Amazon gift card, okay? So far, big shout out to Savannah, Madeline, Christine, Ellen, Kim, um, Kim, I can't read my, my writing, or oh, Nikki, and forgive me if I haven't mentioned one um, who already has, um, you know, introduced himself. So do it, and you can already win, okay? So today, okay, also, now is the time to take out your workbook. We, I have sent a workbook for you, which will be very helpful because I'll be going through the workbook and we'll be talking about these things, okay? So pull your workbook or a notebook and start taking um, notes. And um, just to summarize everything, in the next four days, I will show you, I will share with you the framework that I have realized everybody with autoimmune will have to put into place and work with um, under each pillar in order to achieve autoimmune wellness slash health for a normal life. Um, my name is Cordula Marshalls. Just a quick intro for those of you who don't know me so well yet. My name is Cordula Marshall. I live in Canada in Toronto, just north of Toronto. Um, but I'm originally from Germany. Okay, so I'm originally from Germany. I, I've been living here now for 18 years. I've been married to I'm, I'm married to a Canadian and I have two girls 11 and 13. Um, I have two cats and a new puppy in the house. So it's a little bit crazy lately. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis um, probably about 11 years ago. Um, and prior to that, just, just a year prior to that, I was diagnosed with uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. My health journey honestly started way back, which I only realized, you know, many years later, um, because I honestly was that child who had always got issues. I always thought it was normal to not go to the bathroom every day. Um, now I know it's not. So I also had um, severe ear infections every year. I was put on many antibiotics throughout my childhood. Um, I grew up in a very loving household. However, it was also very, um, a, I don't want to say dramatic, but it was a lot. There was a lot of different personalities in my house so that there was always a lot of drama in my house. Okay. So it was always, I was actually always on alert because, you know, the, the energy in our household could go this way or that way. And I, I, can, I can see that now from my perspective because I have done all this work on the stress response and the healthy mind, which we're going to be talking about in day three and four. So moving on through my young adulthood, I started to have menstrual cycle issues. I never had a period until I was 16. And then I was put on birth control. I stayed on birth control until I hit 27 for a very long time. Nobody ever told me that it is not normal for my body to not be able to, de to develop normal cycles. And that putting me on the birth control that my body actually never ovulated. So when you're on birth control, your body is not ovulating at all. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pushed bleed that you get just by simply changing the hormones that you're taking in, but your body's not ovulating, which screwed up my entire system and increased inflammation even more so. Um, so now I had the antibiotics um, from the ear infections. I had gut issues, constant constipation. I had eczema. I had low fatigue that started to happen. So the whole spiel, and I know that every one of you guys in here has their own story, which might be different, but yet similar in, you know, in certain aspects. And I'm just sharing that so that you know that you're not alone. You know that it's 
something that we can talk about and that um, in the autoimmune world we have to address in order to fully come to a place where we can live a normal life. And so then I took, I, I, I stopped the birth control and because we wanted to start a family. So now at 27, I was not getting my periods. I broke out in adult acne. I had severe inflammation. My energy levels dropped to a point where I went to the office. I found myself sitting at my desk, so tired. And I thought, I'm just going to take a nap and I actually fell asleep on my desk which was an eye-opener and scary and embarrassing at the same time. When I was pregnant, after lots of fertility treatment and all these types of things, when I was finally pregnant with my first child after two, after two years, um, during that year, my mother was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, which was an enormous stress factor in my life which basically threw me over the edge. So I was then, you know, diagnosed with Hashimoto's full flesh. I bought my body just couldn't take it anymore. Um, and so that was me. And um, that that's basically me in a nutshell. So if any of this resonates with you, give me a hands up, give me yes, so similar or whatever it is. Anyways, I went to multiple doctors. Nobody could tell me what it was put me on thyroid medication because my thyroid was finally in a state where it was not considered optimal anymore to put me on medication. So they put me on medication and said to me, you're good to go. Um, we will likely have to increase your um, thyroid medication over the years because you will continue to have that inflammation raging in your body until your thyroid completely gives up and then you will have to be put on full-time thyroid medication for the rest of your life. So this is really where I, in my head, thought, what? So these people are telling me that I'm actually, that my body's starting to destroy itself and that there's nothing I can do. And then I intuitively knew that, you know, there must be something I can do with because I'm, I'm eating every day and I'm living my life. And certainly this must have an influence. but no, the doctor told me nutrition has nothing to do with it. It's just the way it is. Well, it wasn't for me, right? And I'm sure that you have similar stories and can say, you know what? Because you are here learning. This is, not, this is not the end of my story either. And so it took me five long years after diagnosis with both conditions to get to a point where I finally understood what's happening in my body the different systems that came together, causing inflammation, gut detox path pathways, stress response, my mindset, um, and um, hormonal imbalances, and I was able to shift out of it. How did I do it? I was so desperate that I signed up for a nutrition school because nobody could help me. So I actually spent thousands of dollars in order to help myself through nutrition school. So here I am, I'm now running an online um, nutrition business with a group coaching program and private clients specializing in supporting autoimmune women just like you. Okay, though, that is my story. But now let's go ahead and get started. Okay, gut health. My question to you guys is, who in here has been or is currently on an elimination diet? Let me know in the comments, give me a hands up. And if you are, let me know why. Okay, so let me know why you are on an elimination diet um, so we can talk about it. Because I challenge you today to look at the diet, the nutrition part from a different perspective, to put on the diversity abundance glasses and take off the scarcity elimination glasses. There is too much notion out there in terms of eliminating foods for eliminating symptoms. Really, in the grand scheme of things, that is another Band-Aid approach that so often, unfortunately, functional medicine is leaning towards the template elimination diet to quote unquote
quote, heal autoimmune. In my perspective, in my opinion, from what I see in the world, it doesn't work that way. And I will give you the, the reasons as to why today. Um, I have one Facebook member here. Is I'm not on one currently, but I've been through the ringer with trying a bunch of them. Great. I think you're not the only one. And let me know. Is So you said multiple. And where are you now? Are you feeling better? Are you get, going to get, did you get rid of your symptoms? Okay. I'm on elimination diet because of um, autoimmune issues. I have MS and Hashimoto's. Yes. Because that is what we're being told. We have to eliminate, right? Okay. So here is the thing. Um, let's take a closer look at um, what is actually causing the gut to get out of balance, why um, you are being prescribed an elimination diet, why it is part of the, the healing, quote unquote, protocol, but why it is also not the long term route to go. Okay. So the thing is, now you can take out your workbook and we're going to be looking at day one gut health. We're going to be talking about a little bit about leaky gut, the intestinal permeability. Okay, so intestinal permeability, the leaky gut. Why is gut? Why is gut such a key key factor in in overcoming autoimmune? There is many root causes to autoimmune. Like similar to my story, there's never one thing that goes out of balance. There's never one thing that happens that makes you develop autoimmune disease. It is a kaleidoscope of different factors, genetic predisposition, gut dysbiosis, which is, you know, also re relevant to leaky gut, stress and toxic overload. Okay, they all accumulate over the years and they bring on massive imbalances in your system. And once your body has really swung into that um, chronic inflammation, meaning that you can actually detect antibodies now that are proactively destroying your own cells and tissue because of what they call molecular mimicry, which I'll talk about in a second, then you are in a position where chronic inflammation is raging. And there is simply so much has happened that you cannot simply say, you know, I'm just going to do one thing and then I will be completely healed after. At this moment in time, you'll have to look at different factors. Um, so we have to really look at different pillars. So gut health, why leaky gut and how come that leaky gut is actually part of the original root cause. So I will kind of like use the whiteboard a little bit too for those of you who actually don't have the workbook. And um, honestly, if you still need the workbook or if you do want to sign up, Please reach out to Helen in the group, Helen Helen Oliveira. She is my um, she's my um, Facebook group manager. She can um, provide you with that. And you on know, Instagram, you can send me a DM and I'll get it to you. Leaky gut. What does it mean? It means intestinal permeability. Okay. So intestinal permeability. Intestinal permeability. What does that mean? When you're eating food, you are digesting your food. Your, digest, your digestion starts with the senses. Saliva comes in with enzymes. You're digesting your food. It goes all the way in your stomach. And then it goes into your small intestine. And that is where leaky gut happens, okay, in your small intestine. It is when the gut lining in your GI tract, which is really the outside of your body because when you're ingesting something and it hasn't crossed that membrane yet into the gut lining, into the bloodstream, it's still outside your body. It hasn't crossed that lining yet, which means you can poop it out, 
and it, it has no effect on you. The only effect that happens is when this food or food particles are crossing the lining, getting into the bloodstream, because that is when your immune system is reacting. Now, food per se is not necessarily bad, right? So we have not, it's like food has not been created to harm us in any way. The nightshades and tomatoes and whatever it is, um, legumes and beans, they have not been around to harm us. What has become out of balance is your gut through different triggers. So leaky gut syndrome means that you see those junctions. The junctions mean that in between those cells are protein junctions. And they're usually very tightly knit together. So you basically have those cells and then they have those junctions in between those protein junctions. And you have so many of those cells in your gut lining. You have to understand that your gut is a 20 foot tube. It's a very long tube. So you have thousands of those gut cells in there. So if those protein junctions in the middle starting to loosen up, then what happens is that it's almost like it's, it, it's like a cheesecloth. It's like a cheesecloth that filters. It filters out the nutrients that your body needs and it keeps out the, the toxins and the pathogens that are not supposed to come in there. If those junctions are loosening, uh, loosening up, bigger food molecules are being presented into your bloodstream, right? Those molecules are not 100% digested. Now, what does that mean? Your body doesn't recognize that food molecule. Your body says, wait a second, that looks like a tomato, but it isn't. It looks different, right? And so what happens? Your body is starting to have an immune response. It's triggering those T cells. It's triggering those cells, those white blood cells to come in and take care of that invader, right? And it's starting to attack those. Now, if this happens over a long time, you are starting to develop food intolerances. That is, that is the, the meaning, I mean, very simply said, of creating food intolerances. It is the intestinal permeability. One of the reasons is the intestinal permeability, right? So it's not, leaky gut is not a diagnosis. It's a process, right? It's a condition in which um, the cells of your gut lining become looser and allowing larger molecules to enter the bloodstream, okay? Now, the reason as to why you have leaky gut, that is the question. You might think, um, why am I having leaky gut, right? So I'm asking you, what do you think? Why is it that you are experiencing bloating? Why is it that you're experiencing constipation? Why is it that you're experiencing diarrhea? Why is it that you're experiencing acid reflux? All of these symptoms are part of a leaky gut issue. So I'm asking you, why do you think is that? How did that develop? Um, just going to give you here a second. I'm going to see what you guys say. Okay, hold on. Okay, perfect. So leaky gut root causes, again, leaky gut has many different root causes and they all come together at various stages in your life and create imbalances. Toxins and stress, I have somebody here, okay? SIBO, okay, interesting. SIBO, toxins and stress, all right. So yes, toxins and stress is part of it. SIBO, 
probably most likely SIBO is a, a direct, you know, like result of intestinal permeable, permeability that happened before. Okay. Um, not sure if everyone I have has leaky gut, are they, or do they have autoimmune problems? Good question. Everybody who has an autoimmune issue deals with leaky gut syndrome. Everybody, because your immune system sits in the gut. One part of your biggest immune system sits in the gut. We talk about that in a second. Hold on, we're getting there. Leaky gut root causes are, okay? And then I'm going to be, so keep in mind, so for now, I just want you to keep in mind that leaky gut means your gut lining has become out of balance, intestinal permeability. It is now allowing, it has become out of integrity and is and, and is allowing food molecules in that are too large, that are triggering your immune system, that are triggering you to start to have food intolerances, okay? So leaky gut root causes, you know, diet, of course, always. Our Western diet is full of sugar and processed foods, right? Stress, okay? So stress is a big one. Stress. We're going to be talking about stress in day three. There's the direct connection between your brain and your gut and the messaging through the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve can really affect your digestion through messaging to your gut when it is stressed. Um, infections. Okay. So when you think about food poisoning, when you, when you think about bacterial overgrowth, when you think about candida infections, um, even um, Epstein-Barr virus, um, H. pylori, all of these things can contribute to leaky gut. And I'm sure that all of you guys have heard about that connection, even dealt with it before, okay? Toxin, is, toxin exposure, okay? So toxins can lead to leaky gut. And antibiotics, um, sorry, antibiotics. All of these factors have been studied and shown to be part of you creating leaky gut, okay? And gut dysbiosis. So who in here has been on rounds of antibiotics for several reasons? I, I was there. I was there. Now, here's the thing. The antibiotics, not only do they harm your gut lining, they also, they basically, they're like a bomb in your gut. And what are they doing? They're flattening all of your gut microbes. The, the, the larger um, portion of your gut microbes. Those antibiotics are nonspecific. If you throw them in the gut, they kill not just bad bacteria, they kill good bacteria, which means that up to 60% of your good friendly bacteria that you need are being eliminated by antibiotics. Now, if you are on several rounds of antibiotics within five years or longer, you are you have just destroyed a large amount of your bacterial rainforest in your gut as well as your gut lining. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So why do we need where is that gut autoimmune connection? Your immune system is your white blood cells, but your immune system is also your gut bacteria. Those two systems are needed in good balance and in a good healthy state to keep your immune system well balanced and reacting properly. Now, I'm asking you, what do you think? What is building your immune system? What is building your white blood cells? 
what is building your gut bacteria? Let me know. What do you think? What do you need in order to create health, a healthy, strong immune system that is neither overreacting or being suppressed? I'm just going to leave it that it's like that for a second to get your input. What do you need? I'm curious to see what you guys um, come up with. Antibodies. Okay, anything else? Um, antibiotics, chronic infection, hair loss, brain fog, all the time tired. Yes. You know, like all of these symptoms, we all have to deal with. Okay, what does the body need to create good immune health? It needs the building blocks. It needs building blocks. You need building blocks to build your white blood cells. And you need the right building blocks, nutrients, and food to nourish your gut microbiome. Makes sense, right? Because we don't grow just by breathing air, drinking water. We grow and develop because we're eating food. We are growing and developing and having all of these crazy, amazing um, systems in our bodies work properly because they are using. Minerals, vitamins, fiber, protein, fats to be able to do these actions and be able to repair and restore themselves, correct? So this is what we need to understand. So if we are starting to eliminate foods, to eliminate symptoms because of imbalances that happened over the course of the years due to different reasons, we are basically cutting are the building blocks that we actually need in abundance in order to create a healthy and strong immune system. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And we're going to go into details as to what that is and as to how we can start that. I just really want to make sure that you guys understand the connection between the gut health and autoimmune. Once the gut health is out of balance, you know, you, your body is starting to not get the right nutrition because it is not digesting and absorbing your nutrients properly. Your body is starting to react to foods because it's not digesting and absorbing properly. You know, molecules are going through the gut lining that is damaged, causing, causing, and causing inflammation in your gut, in your, in your blood, um, in, in, in your immune system and your blood system is responding, but it also your gut bacteria have become so out of balance that you are not digesting your food properly. So here's the thing, ladies, your gut bacteria are a big helper for you in digesting your food. You can only digest so much. The, a large majority of digestion, especially fiber. So now we're going to go into the nutrient density part of it all. A large amount of fibers are actually being digested by your gut bacteria. So here's the thing a lot of you guys in here, including myself, I had issues with fiber. I couldn't eat beans. They gave me horrendous gas. They gave me bloating. Um, my blood sugar crashed. Um, grains, same thing. Why is that? It is because your gut microbiome are helping your body to digest. You can do it on your own. You need the help of your gut bacteria. So now I want to go into um, that comment that somebody posted on Instagram. Um, antibiotics, root cause, chronic infection, root cause, hair loss, brain fog, all the time, tired. Now you're experiencing these symptoms and what's happening? It's, what's happening is, is that your body does not get the nutrients that it needs in order to grow hair, right? 
It doesn't get the nutrients that it needs in order for you to keep your energy stable. And there is lots of things that you can do about it. But those are the reasons as to why. And this is what you need to address when you're working on gut health. So nutrient density is what you want to go for. You actually want to, like I said in the beginning, put those glasses on that scream, including abundance, nutrient density versus elimination. Okay. So how do you go about that? Okay. Let me take out my notes so I don't miss anything. All right. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if that makes sense, if you want me to um, go back on anything and explain anything in more detail. Um, so let's just go through the workbook here and I'm going to be uh, letting you know the answers. Um, to create a long lasting healthy gut environment, you really have to break the cycle outlined on your next worksheet, which is, you know, the cycle of leaky gut root causes. You have to break that cycle. And the step to breaking the vicious cycle is to become more aware around your own personal triggers. Listen to your body, think back and be a detective and create your own health history. Become in tune with what has caused you your issues creating autoimmune disease. Okay? The gut is always involved. I think Michelle asked that question. The gut is always involved. And it gives you a really great place to work with to start reducing inflammation. Okay? So let's talk about nutrient density versus band aid approach of eliminating food for life. Because Elimination diets are necessary in a way in the beginning. Why? Because if you are starting this, this, the seriousness of gut repair, yes, you will have to create an environment that is less reactive. So that means that if you are having symptoms when you're certain eating certain foods, you will have to remove them most likely. Not always. Um, I will say that not always, but sometimes for a short period of time. But what I see is, is I see that a lot of women are actually staying on those elimination diets for months, sometimes even years. And let me know in the comments if that is you. Let me know if, if, if you have been doing that or if you have been told that. Why is that? Because if you do that over the long period of time, you are decreasing your nutrient intake for so many years or months that your body completely you know, reduces its microbiome, reduces the capability of even digesting these foods. That means once you reintroduce them, you, your gut is just exploding because it can't handle it. And the thing is too, is that not only that, but you're actually creating more and more imbalances by doing that in your body, okay? So you will have to work on repairing the gut. So how is how can you do that? So how can you do that? So we're going, to, we're going to go into the, the food section a little bit now. So you can actually um, get some information on what's important to include in the gut healing journey. Okay. So again, let me know in the comments if any of this makes sense. Um, any questions, any concerns? Um, why is it that I have... Oops, why is there have been on my nation diet? I think you mean elimination diet, and I have more problems with food. Yeah, this is exactly what I just talked about. That is the direct result that I see every single time. Every single time I see that on the elimination diet for so long. Why? Well, now you know because you are decreasing. The amount of necessary building blocks is like you want to build a house, but you don't have the nutrients that your house needs to build a strong foundation. So you are lacking the, the diversity, the abundance to bring that into your system. Your gut microbiome are the little hard workers that are helping you build that house. You're not feeding them, right? 
So you're not feeding them with, with fiber, with red vegetables, with legumes, with grains. So they're becoming weaker and basically they're dying off, right? And then you have the pathogenic bacteria that are taking over the bad guys. And they're starting to destroy everything now that everything that you have built, they're starting to destroy. They're starting to produce metabolites, like little, almost like little toxic bombs that throw at your gut lining and uh, in your gut bacteria that makes it even harder to digest and absorb, which then also, you know, creates more imbalances and creates more food sensitivities, the direct result of it. So what do you need in order to get started on your gut restoring um, journey? Okay, number one. All right, here we go. So write this down so you have it and you can actually get started. Okay. Number one, most important thing when you think about gut repair and gut restore is fiber. Okay. So fiber. I can have like a whole nother session on fiber, but I'll keep it short. So assess your fiber. You need to know how much fiber you're ingesting. Fiber is like, is fiber is the bread and butter of your gut health. You have different types of fiber. There's a lot of different fibers that do different things, but you need fiber to create bulk. You create fiber for your stool to move through your GI tract in a reasonable time. If you don't poop every day, or if you poop, let's say, once a day and it's all pebbly, you're constipated. If you poop three times a day and it's pebbly and you're not fully eliminating, you're constipated. If you don't go for a day and then you have a massive diarrhea flush, you're constipated, right? So it's gut imbalance. You need to dial that in and you need fiber for that. You need fiber for that. Also, fiber is feeding your little helpers every day. Fiber is feeding your gut bacteria in, in your gut microbiome. They can't survive if you don't feed them, right? So that is the other part of fiber. Now, we have been so um, brainwashed with, you know, like, avoid all the legumes, avoid all the grains. I don't want to go into gluten. That's a whole different story here. But people are not eating their carbs. There's carb phobia out there. They say, Carbs make me gain weight. It's not true. Carbohydrates have a distinct, um, you know, um, task to play, which is feeding your gut bacteria, giving your body energy, the, your cells energy, and also create that bulk in your stool. Okay. So, do you know how much fiber you're eating? Let me know in the comments because most of my clients do not. I had no idea how much fiber, okay? So here's the thing. Uh, what Here's one thing I want you to do, okay? So there's an app and the app is called, um, I think it's called Chronometer. Chronometer. Download that app and for one day, track your fiber intake. Track what you're eating. Not for calories. I don't care about calories, right? I could care less about calories. I care about nutrient density. Put it in and see what it spits out by the end of the day. And then share with me or the group. Let us know. The average person is eating 15.15 grams of fiber per day in the Western world when we should be eating anywhere between 30 to 40 at least, okay? That requires you to eat a lot of vegetables. That requires you to eat grains, okay? So also we're gonna go into the grain section a little bit more in a, in a second, okay? So the richest, 
sources of fiber are also found in the four food groups that a lot of us in here avoid. Number one, whole grains, okay? Whole grains. So I'm talking about, um, you know, also the ancient grains, okay? So something like barley, spelt, buckwheat, I'm talking about, um, you know, rice and um, all of these things, okay? Legumes. Beans, beans and legumes, I, I see so often people are avoiding. And, um, you know, oftentimes I see a lot of people avoiding vegetables. Vegetables because of elimination diets, number one. And because of, they have been told those vegetables are inflammatory. So I'm talking about tomatoes, I'm talking about nightshades, peppers, artichokes, all of these things. Um, you Let me know if, if you agree that you have been told or read online, it's, it's criminal that these foods are inflammatory and not good for somebody with an autoimmune, okay? So that is something. And then fruit. I see a lot of people avoid fruit because they say the sugar content is too high, right? So we are avoiding all of these foods and thereby we're taking away the fiber that our body desperately needs in order to keep our gut running smoothly and in a good position. Um, now I was gonna share with you the richest sources of fiber that you can incorporate, okay? So write that down. Um, those are the richest sources of fiber you can start eating right away um, that will help you get going on the fiber intake, okay? So, number one, avocado, okay? Avocado. Avocado has 10 grams per cup, okay? So, 10 grams per cup. The next one is raspberries. Raspberries. Raspberries is an incredible fiber food. It has eight grams per cup, right? So eight grams. So in the summer, I can eat raspberries nonstop. I can have, you know, fresh raspberries of, you know, the shrub is amazing. So when you think about one cup of raspberries, eight grams, that's a lot of fiber right there. The next one is barley. Okay, so barley is an amazing therapeutic food. I can only recommend it has eight, eight grams, eight grams per a quarter cup. A quarter cup of barley has eight grams. So when you think about it, if you have half an avocado in the morning, if you have a cup of raspberries, if you have a quarter cup of barley, you are already at like 20 grams for the day, right? Um, then we have black beans, okay? Oops, sorry about that. Then we have black beans. The black beans come in at 15 grams per cup. And then we have chickpeas, okay? So chickpeas have um, 12.5 grams of fiber per cup. So those are just a few foods you can start incorporating to increase your fiber. So let me know in the comments. I really want to know from you guys, what do you think? Do you think that you're eating more than 20 grams of fiber per day? I just honestly had a conversation with a client with me last week. And she said to me, I don't know why I'm having all these symptoms. My diet is really good. So when we looked at her diet, yes, her diet wasn't bad, but was it good enough? No, because when I asked her, how many servings of vegetables do you eat? She says about three. I said, that's okay. So three servings of vegetables. And when do you eat them? Like, how do you eat them? And she says, dinner time. So I asked her, so which means that, Starting from breakfast until dinner time, 
you're not having any vegetables. And she goes, oh, yes. See? So there is this connection, right? Of, oh my goodness, I do eat my vegetables, but do I amplify these foods? Do I diversify? Do I bring in more? Do I eat enough of these nutrients? Okay. Number two is minerals. So the number two gut healing, I can't say healing because it's literally out of the scope of the practice. So gut repair food is minerals. So you might be surprised by saying minerals. That is funny. Why minerals, right? Um, don't forget about the small guys, right? We need those small guys to make the big guys work well. Without the minerals, the vitamins can't do their job properly. Those two, the vitamins and the minerals, are working together in synchrony. If you don't have enough minerals in your body, your vitamins will not be used properly by your body. Okay, so don't forget about the minerals. Don't forget about the small guys. Okay, what do what 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 do they do? I'll give you a few things, like a few things what they actually do for you to make that connection. Minerals carry the protein into your cells. Minerals are needed to carry the protein into your cells. Who in here has hair loss issues? Who in here has nail issues? There are either weak nails, they're breaking. Who in here has um, skin issues, eczema, rashes, all of these things? Let me know. It's, it's a protein absorption issue. Right? There is a protein absorption issue that's happening. And one of the reasons why that's happening is because you might not have enough minerals to carry those proteins into your cells. Apart from the other issue with your intestinal permeability where you know your digestion absorption is off track because of that point, right? I have horrible fingernails. I have skin issues, right? So there you go, okay? So minerals is important and a lot of people forget about that, okay? They also move vitamins into the cells and they help vitamins to do their job. Um, and they're also important for nerve signaling. Hello, anxiety. Hello, you know, like feeling blue, like moody. All of us with an autoimmune, we have, you know, we go through phases in our lives. I haven't met one person yet, one lady yet, who hasn't dealt with some sort of, you know, either depression, anxiety, or just feeling low or all of these things. Um, minerals are needed for nerve signaling, which comes, is very important in mental health as well as in heart health, right? So. We are almost always deficient in them, specifically in chronic inflammation. When you get tested for sometimes at the doctor, how many here had experienced low iron before, low potassium, low magnesium, low calcium, low zinc? Let me know any of those, if any of those, you know, ever came up for you, right? It's important to address these things to create the sustainable long-term health. I have somebody low iron. Yes, low iron is very common. Low iron actually is also related to your stomach. Okay, so low iron is also um, directly related to your stomach acid, right? Just imbalances. So that is a whole different spiel right there right? But see how it all comes together. Like the digestive tract gets out of, um, out of balance, absorption gets out of balance, minerals are not there to carry those nutrients into the cells, you know, leaky gut intestinal permeability starts, 
your gut microbiome has been taking a toll because of all of these antibiotics, infections, um, you know, toxins, stress, lifestyle. See how it all comes together. So we have to address it. Now I'm going to give you some of the best food sources of minerals. Okay. Okay. So for iron, iron. Okay. So iron, you can incorporate kelp. You can also do almonds. Okay. You can do cashews cashews. Um, and also, um, sorry, um, beef liver, beef liver, as well as pumpkin seeds. Okay. Low iron. Those are just some of the few foods. I hope you guys can see that on Instagram, um, that you can start to incorporate regularly for minerals, for iron, magnesium, okay? So I know that a lot of people always drink the magnesium drinks, which is okay, but you can also amplify that with food, right? So for magnesium, you also have kelp and almonds, right? And the, you also have buckwheat. Buckwheat is also amazing in magnesium and Believe it or not, my favorite dark chocolate. And I'm serious about that. Dark chocolate is actually a superfood if you're not, you know, taking, like if you're not eating the processed stuff, okay? Um, then for zinc, for zinc, you have the oysters, okay? The oysters, also pumpkin seeds, super rich in zinc, okay? Um, split peas, split peas, and one of my absolute all-time favorite, because it's so versatile, is ginger. Like, honestly, ginger in everything. Like, ginger is another therapeutic food that is so easy to incorporate. Just give me one quick second. I need you to take a sip of my tea. Okay. Okay, you guys. Let me know in the comments if this is something new to you, if you didn't realize that those little guys are so important. And if you feel inspired now to take a little bit of a closer look at um, how you're nourishing yourself and eating, okay? Um, and the third food I was going to hone in on, the, the third um, food group for gut repair, is, let's see, so numbers, oops, I have to find a better solution for that. Um, hold on, I need to put that up a little bit, but there we go, okay. Number three is, oops, foods that calm and support the immune system. I just actually, I think I did, I did a reel on this a while ago. Uh, I got very, a lot of questions. So food, you don't want foods that boost your immune system. Because why? Because your immune system is already in, in overdrive most of the time. So if you start to boost your immune system, you're just triggering more, you know, histamine, you're triggering more, um, you know, like, like more inflammatory action, really, um, you don't want to suppress your immune system, okay? You don't want to suppress it because um, if you suppress it, then you're allowing opportun opportunistic pathogens to, you know, take a deeper root in, in your gut and causing all kinds of issues. That is why I don't really want anybody to go on if, if not, you know, if not necessarily, sometimes it's necessary, but immune suppressives because it just opens up a whole new area of opportunistic stuff to take root in your already inflamed body. So what you want to do is you want to support and calm your immune system. You want to make it strong long-term and you want to calm the immune response, 
right? It's very important to understand the difference because of chronic inflammation. So whenever you see like echinacea, when you're going through a flare, most likely not the best choice you can, you can do. You know? So we need to include lots of food that calm the immune system, which are antioxidant foods. I'm not going to go into, into, into the antioxidant thing and how that all comes together, but a boosted immune system can overstimulate you and throwing it out of balance and um, a suppressed immune system can lend, you know, to um, opportunistic pathogens to take root. Okay. So what are some of the immune calming, immune supporting foods you can increase in your diet and amplify, right? So immune support, right? Immune supportive foods. Um, I'm going to share one of my, some of my favorites, some of my all-time favorites. Number one, mushrooms. Okay, mushrooms. They don't have to be medicinal, even though we can go the medicinal route as well, which I oftentimes actually do in my client protocols. I'm putting in various medicinal mushrooms, depending on what types of symptoms show up. But mushrooms in general are all of them amazing immune modulating foods, right? So criminy or, um, you know, just the button mushrooms or whatever it is that you find in the grocery store. Let me know in the comments if you are a mushroom lover or a mushroom hater, because typically there is nothing in between. So it's either one or the other. Let me know. Well, let me know when was the last time that you had mushrooms, right? Um, I would like to know. Another really good one is aged garlic. Okay. So aged garlic. Garlic is amazing, antifungal, antimicrobial. Aged garlic is basically fermented, which means you are adding wonderful bacteria into your gut to help you, um, you know, to help your immune system to be supported by feeding your gut bacteria. And um, okay, let me see. I eat mushrooms if prepared in a dish. Okay. Can you define aged garlic? Yes. Yeah, so aged garlic is basically um, the black garlic that you see. It's fermented garlic, fermented garlic. You can even ferment these things yourself. Like this is what we do in our house. Um, it's very, very simple to ferment um, and, you know, and, and age things like that to increase your gut microbiome with food, right? The next one is broccoli sprouts. Okay. So broccoli sprouts. So we all know that broccoli in itself is an amazing food. It has an amazing abundance of um, nutrients in it. And when you sprout them, um, when you sprout them, what happens is that you are intensifying the, um, the nutrients right? So the germination really almost doubles. So I think in broccoli, the vitamin C in broccoli, I think it's almost doubled. I have to look it up. I'm not exactly sure how, by how much, but it, all, it doubles for sure the amount of vitamin C. So if you're sprouting seeds, you're just adding that extra punch of nutrient density into your system, okay? Um, and then pomegranates, pomegranates. Wonderful immune supportive food. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. So those things are all amazing that you can start doing right away to help you um, start your, your gut repair journey with food and starting to fall back in love with food and starting to see food for what it is, which is your building blocks that are building your house, namely your body, um, um, and um, yeah, and 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 re re nourishing. Okay, so questions. 
Um, is everything fermented good for you, stomach? I mean, basically, um, all fermented foods? Yes and no. Um, so it really depends. Um, if you want to have, you know, like I, I can't answer that in, in, in detail right now, but if you want to reach out to me in a DM, I can tell you. So fermented foods, depending on what you have, like if you have SIBO, it's probably not a good idea to start fermented foods right away because your body will not be able to process it. I have literally all of these things daily. Why am I always sick? Well, you have to ask yourself, my immune system should be rock solid. Those things are supporting your immune system if, and that's just one part of it too, right? So we're going to be talking about the other pillars in the next days to come. If your immune system is still reacting because of that, then you will have to dig deeper. You will have to look at how is my digestion? How is my absorption? How are my digestive enzymes? How is my stomach acid? Like, how am I eliminating? Do I have bacterial overgrowth? Like all of these things you have to assess and you have to ask yourself these questions in order to understand your body better and in order to see which route you have to go, okay? So if you want to, if you have any more questions, you can always reach out to me and DM me and I'll be happy to answer all of these questions. So I have come to the end of the first day. I think you guys have gotten a really good idea of why the gut is so important, how you can get started in supporting your immune system and why it is necessary to start there. For this week, I have cleared my calendar. Like if you guys want to take this information and want me to take a look at your own personal health story for 15 to 20 minutes, feel free to reach out to me with a connect call. Free of charge, no strings attached, just you and me talking. Like for example, that, um, you know, the, the Facebook member, like, you have all of these things daily. Why am I always sick? Like, you know, you have to dig a little deeper. And if you like, we can have that conversation. I can help you, guide you in this in the right direction. So I'll be dropping my link to my calendar here in the comments in the Facebook group. You can DM me on Instagram if you want to take advantage of that. That was day one, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the session. Tomorrow, we'll be talking about the next pillar of bringing down inflammation, which is detoxification pathways. Because what comes in must come out. And oftentimes inflammation is not just, you know, caused by gut imbalances, but also by how well is your body ridding itself of toxins? Because your body is literally a barrel how how are you overflowing with toxins whether it's metabolic toxins whether it's you know external toxins how is your body processing all of these things your body needs to rid itself of these things on a daily basis so that you are keeping inflammation down so join me tomorrow for day 2 put in the homework the homework thread will be posted in about half an hour. Do the homework. Oh, I should mention what the homework is. So the homework, I want you this week, one of the foods that you have been avoiding, right, by either reducing. So I want you to include one of the foods that you have been avoiding by either reducing the amount of the food, so we'll scale it down, or prepare it in a different way, okay? So think about how you can prepare that food in a different way, and then share how your body is reacting to that food. So I challenge you to pick one food you haven't had for a long time, and to reintroduce it in a way that is compatible, right? So in smaller amounts or in a different way of cooking, and then share with us how you enjoyed that food, okay? All right, everybody. 
Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I will see you again tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.